Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today we're going to set out to try and answer one of the most popular questions in computer science. What programming language should I learn? Now, first off, if you're just starting out, really, it doesn't matter. Pick one. Just run with it. The first language that really fits and speaks to you is probably good enough, and moving from language to language isn't really that hard once you've mastered a couple. However, there is a statistical side to this. We're going to look at it first in terms of which ones are the most used, and then we're going to look at which ones are the most popular by developer assessment, and then we're going to look at which ones make you the most money. And then finally, since this is a game development channel, we're going to look at which ones are most popular in game development. And how are we going to do this? Well, we are going to use the power of statistics. So I'm going to try and keep my opinion out of this, at least until the very end. And we're just going to start and look at raw data. So if you're trying to figure out what programming language is the right one to invest your effort into, especially if you've already got a couple under your belt, and this video should hopefully help. And we're going to start the statistics off by first looking at GitHub statistics. Now, GitHub publishes a list of statistics every year, uh, basically showing trends on GitHub, how many, you know, projects are out there, how many people collaborate on them, so on and so forth. And one of the most interesting things they do is publish top languages over time. So since um, 2014 to 2018, we see a trend of which languages are used to make the most projects. Now, of course, GitHub is going to skew heavily towards certain styles of projects open source, there's going to be a lot of web-based stuff in there. So the fact that JavaScript is the number one in-demand language on GitHub isn't shocking, but it is a popular language and there is value there. But what you might find kind of shocking is that the number two language is and remains Java. Now, a lot of people think Java is a dead or dying language, and that is very much not the case. Now, in the world of game development, a bit less so, but then we look at the other titles here. So we got Python, uh, we have PHP. Now, PHP is there, obviously, because it's got a huge amount of legacy code and support for that code. So you've got things like WordPress that were built on PHP. That is going to bring up the size of the community. And next, we have C++ and C Sharp. Now, interesting, C++ and C Sharp can keep battling each other in popularity between that fifth and sixth spot. Now, I would have thought C Sharp would have actually surpassed C++, but that isn't the case here yet. And then in the seventh spot, with a big jump from 10th, is TypeScript, Microsoft's language for building uh, C, uh, sorry, JavaScript apps applications has gotten more and more popular. Uh, then we got Shell, C, and Ruby following up that category. So some interesting numbers there for sure. Uh, JavaScript is obviously a good one to learn. Um, Java, Python, C++, and C Sharp are definitely valuable as well, as is apparently TypeScript. So those are for GitHub repositories anyways. Now we're going to look at um, in terms of another great place for statistics on programming language is Stack Overflow. Now if you've ever had uh, and the need for help ever, you probably want to Stack Overflow. And each year they do a developer survey. Now, again, these statistics are going to skew towards Stack Overflow users and the type of people that will answer a survey. But here we are, basically, uh, these are the most popular languages by professional developers. And you'll see, once again, JavaScript one, HTML, I don't, yeah, CSS, and, and SQL. And we're going to group all that together and call that web. But then we start looking at the other programming languages and then Java makes a surprise appearance here again. Uh, below that we've got Python, C Sharp, PHP again, uh, C++, C, TypeScript, Ruby, Swift, and Objective-C. So the two, um, uh, I guess we could call them uh, Apple-oriented programming languages are there. And then we get um, assembly coming in next. So we move on from that, uh, same category, same site, same survey to the most profitable languages. So this is, again, survey-based, but we're seeing F-sharp, uh, Microsoft's functional programming language, is the most lucrative to learn, as is OCaml, Clojure, Groovy. But then we're getting into mainstream languages. We've got Perl and Rust, um, kind of filling out near that top category, Erlang and Scala, which are specialized Java-based languages, Go, um, Ruby, and then we're scrolling way down, like C++ didn't even make the front page, um, which I find off or wrong. Uh, there are many things you can say about C++ development. Uh, generally, if you are a competent professional programming C++ developer, you're making pretty good money. Even if we just skew it to the US, C++ doesn't make this list. So again, this is user contributed and I find that a little shocking, uh, but that's the case. Now we can hear, this is an interesting category. This is the programming languages that developers love working with the most. So you'll notice JavaScript is no longer on the top. What we've got now is Rust. Rust is the most popular language, and I believe this is for a couple years running now, uh, of developers on Stack Overflow. So the language they want to work with the most is Rust. Now another one that's gaining in popularity like TypeScript is Kotlin. Now Kotlin was created by uh, JetBrains, the maker behind, or NetBrains. 
Jet brains. I always mix those two up. Anyways, the people that make IntelliJ and all those other tools, uh, they make Kotlin, which is a JVM-based language. And it's growing in popularity, and apparently developers like using it. Behind that, we've got Python, TypeScript, Go, Swift, JavaScript, C Sharp, F Sharp, uh, Clojure, uh, Shell Script, Scala, um, Scala, I mean... Again, C++ isn't making the initial list. It's down here at 46.7%, which I find a little shocking, to be honest. Uh, Ruby also down there. Ruby used to be really popular. Uh, Java at 50%. It's kind of middling in the pack. Uh, now, again, these are the most loved by developers. Interestingly enough, the most hated by developers is a lot of legacy languages like VB6, COBOL, um, CoffeeScript, which I find a little shocking. That's a... Um, a language built over top of JavaScript, just like TypeScript is. Uh, VB.NET, VBA, MATLAB, Assembly. Um, C is in there at 62%, and C++ is there at 53%. Which, uh, again, I, I'm a little shocked at those uh, responses. Then we get into wanted. I'm not entirely certain what wanted means, to be honest, so I'll just... Uh, We'll skip over that category. That That is not in demand, and we're going to look at in demand in a second. So those were all Stack Overflow jobs. Now we're actually looking at IT Jobs Watch. Now this is a look at jobs available in the UK. So it's one market very specifically, but it does show us a couple of interesting things. First off, the number of actual jobs out there by that technology, and then the salary attached to them. And we're going to ignore categories. So Agile, that's like a bunch of web technologies together. Ditto for developer and finance and SQL. Those mean nothing. But you'll see here, one of the top ones here is JavaScript, which is kind of shocking. There's a lot of jobs available. Now, this is supposed to be sorted by this category, and it isn't. So take you'll have to look at the actual numbers attached. So you see um, C-sharp jobs, there's... 3,400 Java jobs. Again, Java is doing shockingly well and Java developers are making 10,000 pounds. So like $15,000 more than C-sharp developers are, at least according to these job listings in the UK. Again, we have .NET developers. We have a lot of overlap with C-sharp, but you'll see there are a ton of jobs for C-sharp and .NET out there. Um, we get down here, HTML, 1,500. The pay goes quite a ways down. Python jobs, again, are quite well paid. Um, and do we have, where do we finally get to C or C++ on this list? Let's just keep going until we find it. Uh, okay, maybe I will. Oh, C++, here we go. So 52,500 pounds and 1,100 jobs there. So pretty pretty lucrative. Now, unfortunately, here's where this starts falling apart. C-sharp developer versus C-sharp. And these numbers make no sense. So again, take this whole IT jobs watch thing with a grain of salt. The granularity isn't there. But this is a gestate of all of the jobs available in the UK. So at least it does give you some um, idea of what is in demand and what is being paid, even if it's not the most accurate thing we've got to look at. So next up, we're going to look specifically at game development jobs. Now, what I've done is I'm on indeed.com and I'm looking for specific terms. Now, this again is really not science-y, but what it is going to show us is if I search for the term game programming, we get 6,800 jobs, as you can see right there. And now what I've done is I've done a pre-search for a number of popular technologies. So we can get an idea of those 6,800 jobs that show up, such as this physics engineer for Nintendo and so on. Uh, how many of them are 2K games? So these are these are companies you've actually heard of that are searching for um, game programming. We're going to look at how that breaks down by language. So we got 6,800 jobs listed as the total pool. So if I search for C Sharp, we're going to see we have... 863 C-sharp jobs available. Now C++, we're going to jump up to 1,500 jobs, which is pretty impressive, but I think you're going to find a couple of things shocking when I keep doing this search. Java, 1,300 jobs. Uh, if I go here, Python, 1,364 jobs. Now keep in mind, Python is used heavily in build engineering and for uh, TD. So if you're an art technical director, there's a lot of demand for Python there in the tooling side of things. So maybe not directly for game development, but game pipeline that Python is used probably more than you think. Next up, we got Lua with 93 jobs, Rust with seven jobs, Go with 100 jobs, JavaScript with 671 jobs, TypeScript, 62 jobs. Now, keep in mind, these are just for with game programming specific. So not just general TypeScript, but TypeScript game programming in this particular case. HTML, we have 385. And that's about it. That's, those are the most popular languages I could think of. And you can see how they break down. So C++ is definitely still out in front as the most popularly requested. And keep in mind, again, a lot of these jobs are going to list multiple things. So, for example, when I search for Java, so we got 1,500 under the C++. When I search for Java, you'll see it even in the top listing here. Have experience with C++ 
or Java. So it doesn't mean the job was exclusively for that language or whatever. A lot of times a job will list multiple language re requests. But it does give you an idea of what the languages out there are for game programming. And it's probably more broad than it has ever been in history. Now, it used to be quite consistently uh, that it was C++ was always asked for, even if you didn't actually program in C++. And you're starting to see that's changing a little bit. Now, one I didn't search for yet that I guess I should, and I don't think this will be very high. I'm curious if there's any hacks. Yeah, we have four hacks jobs out there. Um, and those are those are things that were didn't even exist before. So, and I guess I should be thorough. We got Swift has 78 jobs, and I won't search for Objective C because I'm gonna let my opinion in. Objective C should die. Okay, so that is kind of the breakdown of the game-related jobs that are available. Now, if you're kind of interested in learning more about uh, what engines are available for what programming languages. So if you, you're not necessarily looking about jobs, but instead you're looking at the end result, I've got a series for you and I'll actually just link that instead of going into it in detail. But basically I broke down um, the most popular game engines per programming language. So for example, if you're looking at C Sharp development, C Sharp is used for uh, as a secondary language in the Godot game engine, as a primary language in CryEngine 5, as a primary language in Unity, obviously, um, and so on. So if you go into the C-sharp category, you'll see what the C-sharp based programming language did over C++. Your primary is something like um, the Unity game engine, where but you've got a whole lot of secondaries or you've got a lot of frameworks that apply there. And I've done this for Python and Java as well. So if you're interested in seeing what languages are used for what um, game engines, I've got you covered there and I will link that down below. But that's where I'm going to end things. Um, that is the look at... Uh, the various different options that you've got there for learning a programming language. Now, again, to go back to where I started things off, if you want to learn a language just out of curiosity, learn a language out of that. But if you're looking for some kind of a metric to just figure out what languages in 2019 are most in demand, hopefully you saw something on this list that, um, you know, maybe will help you determine one way or another where you should invest your time. Now, do keep in mind, we looked at a number of different high-level statistics. So some of them were surveys, which can be tainted, of course. Uh, some of them were, um, you know, job listings. Uh, again, that is just data. And how you want to apply that data or how valuable that data is, is ultimately up to what you're looking for doing. So take it all with a giant grain of salt. But once sometimes when you've got enough salt together, it can also be useful. So hopefully that helped some of you out in terms of what programming languages to learn today. Personally, uh, I would recommend if you're at the end of it and you have no particular idea where you want to go, I still think Lua is an excellent beginner language. It's the kind of language you can learn in a weekend. And you can still use those in... Um, uh, it's less and less now, but there are a number of game engines built around Lua. So there's a recommendation I would make, even though I didn't even make this list. Um, and increasingly, C Sharp is becoming more and more relevant. Apparently, Java is still much more popular than I expected in the past. Uh, but if you can't figure out where you want to go in game development, you're going to find a lot of game engines, because of Unity's lead, are going down the C Sharp route. So you're not going to go wrong by learning C Sharp. But as we saw from this example, C++ is still quite relevant in the world of game development. Uh, a little bit less so in the world of general game or general development. But in the world of game development, C++, C++ is definitely worth learning. Learning. I would be sure, though, if you want to learn C++ in this day and age, uh, make sure you learn modern C++. Learn C++ 14. Maybe not 17. There's a lot of argument over the future of C++. But C++ 14 versus, say, C++ 03 are massively different languages. So make sure that if you're going to learn it, learn the modern implementation of it. That, that's the best advice I can give there. Now, I'm give you curious. Is there a language on there that shocked you in terms of how popular it was or... Um, are you shocked at the, the unpopularity of certain languages? And what would you personally recommend as someone to learn as their next language if you were just looking uh, at face value? There's also, there's another popular, there's a number of popular languages out there that would be of just interest to learn. I'm going to learn Rust because, hey, it's, it's not on my list and uh, I'm interested in it. Not because I think it's going to take over the world. I just, I just find it as an interesting development of, you know, game development related languages. So your opinion down below in the comments and let's please keep this one civil. I know that uh, programming languages can be a bit of a touchy subject and it doesn't have to be. Again, this entire argument or this entire conversation has been stat driven and hopefully we can keep the conversation just as logic driven as much as possible. All right, that's it for now. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.